This is part 24 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss a scenario in which Entity Framework generates an entity for the many-to-many -many relationship bridge table. In part 22 of this video series, we discussed many-to-many -many relationship using these three database tables, Courses, Students, and Student Courses. Student Courses here is the bridge table. Notice the columns that this table has got. They are foreign keys to Courses and Students table. Apart from the foreign keys, we are not capturing any additional data within the bridge table. Now, when we created an entity model based on these three tables, we only had two entities created, course and student. Notice that we don't have any entity created for this bridge table. Now, let's say our requirements have changed and the business wants us to capture enrolled data as well so that the business can know when a specific student has joined in a specific course. For that purpose, we have included enrolled date column within this student courses bridge table. Now, look at this. This bridge table has got additional columns apart from the foreign key columns. Now, when we create an entity model based on these three tables, Entity Framework is going to generate an entity for the bridge table also. Notice that here we have an entity called Student Course, which uh, you know basically represents this Student Courses database table. And if you look at the property Student ID, Course ID, Enrolled Date, they represent the respective columns within this table. Let's actually look at this in action. Obviously, the first step here is to create these three tables, which I have already done. And here is the SQL script that can do it. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an empty ASP.NET Web Application project. To this project, let's add a new item. And we want to add ADO.NET Entity Model. Let's call this Employee Model. And we want to generate the model from the database. And let's give this connection string a meaningful name. Let's call this Employee DB Context. So this is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the views, stored procedures, and tables. And we are interested in these three tables. Let's give this model a namespace name. Let's call this employee model and click finish. Now, Entity Framework should generate an entity even for the bridge table. So notice that here there is a bridge table called student course. Uh, it has not named the entities as we expect it to name. Let's call this course with an E at the end and let's change the student course also to have an E at the end and this navigation property as well. All right. So let's save these changes. So if you look at the entities that we have got now, so notice this these entities we have got course entity course entity has got one to many relationship to student course and similarly student entity has got one to many relationship with student course now there is no direct relationship between student and course so if we have to get course information you know with a student object we have to go to student course and from there we go to the course object we'll look at that in just a bit now a possible interview question here as you know an interviewer may ask you explain when an entity you know will and will not be created by the entity framework for the bridge table in a many to many relationship an entity for the bridge table is not created when the bridge table has only the foreign keys on the other hand if the bridge table has any other columns apart from the foreign key columns then a bridge table is created and we have seen that in action so initially, when the student courses table had only student ID and course ID columns, which are just the foreign keys, we didn't have any entity created for the bridge table. But now, in addition to the foreign key columns, we also have enrolled date column. So Entity Framework created an entity for the bridge table. Now, let's see how to query the data. So for that purpose, first let's design a web form with a grid view control on it. And we want to display student name, course name, and the date in which they have enrolled in that specific course. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So first of all, to this project, let's add a web form. And let's set the style attribute here, and let's set font family to area. Let's drag and drop a grid view control onto this web form. 
and within the code behind file in the page load. So we first need to create an employee DB context instance. So let's go ahead and do that first. And now we want to write a link query to retrieve, you know, student name, course name, and enrolled date. Student name will be present in student entity course name will be present in course entity enrolled date will be present in student course entity okay now we can either start from student and then go to student course and then to course or we can start with course and then go to student course and then to student let's actually start with student so I'm going to write a link query here so let's say from student and let's actually assign this to a variable so let's call this a query so from student in employee db context dot students okay so this should give us all the students and then from there so we are going from student now to student course in so student dot so student entity has got one to many relationship to student courses. So we are going from student to student courses. Okay. So from student in employee DB context dot students. So from student course in student dot student courses. So what we want to do, we want to select a new anonymous type and what do we want to display within the anonymous type I mean within the grid view control student name course name and enrolled date so I'm going to have here a property with name student name equals and how are we going to get the student name we can use the student entity so student dot student name and we want next course name so course name equals so here we only have student and student course but keep in mind if you look at the entity model that we have you know we have um, I mean we don't have a direct relationship between course and student we have to go from course to student course and then from there to student similarly from student to student course and then to course so here we have student and student course but now we need course name so what we basically can do is we can go from student course to course and then get the course name and finally we need enrolled date so let's call the property enrolled date equals and where do I get the enrolled date from from student course so enrolled date okay so that's it that's our query now we are going to bind the results of this query directly to the grid view control so I'm going to say grid view one dot data source equals we have the link query so convert that to list and invoke the data bind alright so let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the output that we expect We also have some test data within the grid view control. Notice that we have student name, course name, and enrolled date. Now, if you notice what we are doing here, we are going from student to student course and from there to course. Okay? Or you can rewrite this query so you can start with course. So from course in employee db context dot courses. So from course to student courses and from there we can I mean to retrieve the student name we go from student course to student and then retrieve the student name and here course name you don't have to go from student course you can directly go use the course object that you have here so course dot course name an enrolled date will be student course dot enrolled date now when we run this we should get the same output it's just that now we are navigating from course to student course and then to student all right let's also see how to manipulate the data that we have within student courses table um, for that purpose let's actually drag and drop a button control here 
let's also set the format of this one to use colorful scheme and then let's drag and drop two button controls and let's quickly change the text on this one to assign WCF course to Mike at the moment Mike is not enrolled in WCF course so let's change the text on that to that and then let's change the text on the second button to remove John from SQL Server course alright and let's double click the first button to generate the click event handler now let's actually run this one so that we can see what data we have within the database so notice that at the moment Mike is not enrolled in WCF course and let's execute these select queries so if you look at the data that we have here so WCF course ID is 4 Mike's student ID is 1 so now we want to enroll Mike into WCF course and to do that so we need to first create an instance of employee DB context class so let's do that now to employee DB context we can add either courses or students or student courses now here what we want to do is add a student course and to that I'm going to you know add an object of type student course so for that purpose first we need to create a student course object so let's go ahead and do that so student course let's call this WCF course for Mike so because we want to assign Mike to WCF course so new student course and here what are the properties of student course we need to specify student ID course ID and the date in which uh, they have enrolled to the course so here student ID is going to be 1 and course ID is going to be 4 because WCF course ID is 4 and then we also need to specify enrolled date so enrolled date going to be you know something like date time dot now and all you need to do is pass that to this add object method and then finally invoke save changes as simple as that okay so let's go ahead and run this add WCF course to Mike refresh look at that Mike is now assigned to WCF and we also have an enrolled date Now, when we click this button we want to remove John from SQL Server course let's see how to do that first of all let's double click on the button to generate the click event handler so again you know the same kind of code let's create an instance of the employee DB context class and then first we need to find out you know the student course that we want to remove so which is the student course that we want to remove this one okay now we can uniquely identify a student course using student ID and course ID so John ID is 2 and SQL Server course ID is 3 so John student ID is 2 SQL Server course ID is 3 so what I'm gonna do here is use the employee DB context and we have access to student courses from there so I'm going to get the first or default match where a given student ID is 2 and the given course ID is 3 so this method is going to return the student course object so let's store it in a variable of type student course so let's call it student course to remove and then we are going to use this employee DB context student courses dot remove or dot delete object and then we are going to pass the student course to remove to this method and then invoke save changes method that's it so let's go ahead and run this and let's click this button it should have removed that let's refresh the page notice that SQL Server is gone alright 
that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day